So I bought a pedal power ISO five. I actually bought two of them um, to possibly power one of my one of my pedal boards, and this guy is giving me problems. So let me tell you. And I'm it's lucky I'm lucky that I bought two of them because now I have a reference to be able to fix this guy. So here is the here is the output that I'm seeing from the left. ISO 5, uh, and it would help to have this one. Uh, well, let me just show you here. So over here, it's um. So here is the output from a normal ISO 5. And this is from the 12 volt output, and that would be, as you can see now, <laughs> uh, 12 volts. And if I change it. If I swap over to uh, this guy over here, and I measure it, I get something like 24 volts, 23.3 volts. So there's obviously something wrong there. And we're going to open it up and um, see what we can find. Okay, so the one that is working is on the right. The one that is not working is on the left here. The first thing I noticed was that this capacitor over here looks a little bloated. He just kind of, he looks a little bloated from the side from my perspective. And if we look at the other one, much, much more flat on the top there. If we go back to here, a little bit more bloated on top. So that's something to look for if you are looking for capacitors to replace your units. I don't know if that's going to directly affect my issue, but um, that was just a good learning opportunity for you guys. So I did some probing around and did some continuity tests with uh, with this guy here and we have the sleeve. This, remember the sleeve is the positive um, signal, the positive power uh, portion of this. So I did a continuity test and this guy matches up with this regulator in the far back here. So if we can just say it louder for the regulators in the back, we have the 3M, or sorry, the LM317 uh, regulator chip over there. Um, it's an adjustable regulator. It's adjustable by those two resistors, if you can see them down there. And that capacitor value of, looks like it's a 10 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. Um, so those are the components that I'm going to be kind of focusing on right now. And I'm going to compare them to what I see in this one that's not currently working. Okay, so I've disassembled the working unit and I traced the 12 volt line back to this regulator over here, but it was going into the but it was going into the input of this regulator. Um, the output of the 12 volt is actually coming from this regulator in the corner. And the part number on that regulator is an LD1117V. So here's the data sheet for the LD1117. It's an adjustable and fixed low drop positive voltage regulator. So here um, it says that there are fixed output voltages of 1.2 volts, 1.8 volts, 2.5, 2.85, 3.3, and 5 volts. But what we're dealing with is a 12 volt output. So we actually have the adjustable version LD1117. Now if we go down a bit more, we could see that the pinout of this thing is, we have this package, this TO220 package, and the uh, V in is on pin 3, V out is here, on pin 2 and that's where we should have the 12 volt and in the broken one we should have the 23 volts there. Um, I did test the one that was good and the input voltage for the one that is good is at 23 volts which is what we're seeing on the output of the other unit. So there might be something either wrong with this unit or maybe there's a disconnection with the soldering. I don't know yet. We'll find out. And then you have the adjustment uh, pin on pin 1. So here is an application note for the LD1117 adjustable version. Down here we see that there is an equation that we can use to 
uh, see what kind of reference voltage we are expecting at the adjustment pin. This is going to be helpful for us when we look at the broken unit and we don't see an adjustment that's uh, correct or not. So um, the resistors on this thing use this EIA96 SMD standard for uh, telling you, you know, what kind of what kind of resistance those things have. So uh, for us, we have 66A, which um, converts to 475 ohms, and that is for R1. And R2 was uh, 59B, and that converts to 4,020 kilo ohms, or 4,020 ohms rather, and that is R2. So if we take R1 divided by R2, that becomes 475 divided by 4,020, and that becomes this number. If we add one to that, we do one over that, and then we multiply that by 12. This is the adjustment voltage that we should expect at the uh, adjustment pin. So this is 10.73 volts. Okay, so if we probe the third pin, or first pin rather, of our thing, we get 10.77 volts, which is very close to 10.73. So this is what we can expect on the uh, this guy over here, this this broken guy. So we're going to see what's wrong with this one uh, next. And here we have the one that's not working out. And if we test the adjustment pin, you can see that we have... If I test the adjustment pin, there's 21 volts across there. The output pin is at 23.4 volts and the input voltage is at also 23 point about that 23.5 volts so massive difference from uh, our working circuit over here so what I think I'm gonna do is change this regulator to something else and I'm going to replace that capacitor in the corner there with something that's not bulging. So I have a I have a 470 microfarad cap at 50 volts. Um, I think I'm going to use this in the meantime, and then when I get my hands on a a thousand microfarad cap, I'll just stick that in there when I have the chance to. So I don't have an LD1117 on hand, but I do have an LM317. So. Uh, this goes up to 37 volts as an output voltage. We only need 12 volts, so we're good there. We supply 1.5 amps of current. On this one, I think we only get 800 amps of current, so we're well over that spec. I think this will be fine to use for a replacement for the LD1117. Um, we'll see what happens. If it blows up, it blows up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But if we go down to here, here's a good reference circuit. It's a basic adjustable regulator, R1 and R2 are over here. If we go down a little bit more, we can see that the equation to uh, figure out the reference voltage is pretty much exactly the same as the LD1117, only here it also takes into account a current and um, R2. So this would be the adjust current going into or out of, I guess, the, the, uh, the adjust pin here and then through R2. Um, Let's see, over here the device was designed to minimize the term I uh, current 100 microamps max. So, you know, it'll be around, so we're, we're talking 100 microamps here. So usually the error term can be neglected. And here we're, we're going to take that at face value there. So this equation is the exact same equation uh, when we take out the error term as the one in our LD1117 example, page 24 as the one over here. So I've swapped the LD1117 for an LM317. So I don't know if you could see that, but it is the LM317 that is now installed. So I'm going to check the, um, the output voltage now using the middle pin as per the pin out. And we are getting 12 volts out. So it works. It's all good. I also replaced this uh, 1000 microfarad for a 470 microfarad at 50 volts. Um, I'll, be, I'll be switching that back to 1000 microfarads when, uh, when I get the chance to.